got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. I got hustle, though ambition flow inside my DNA. I don't contemplate, I meditate, then off your off your head. This that put the kiss to bed. This that I got, I got. I got. What is up guys and as you just saw in that intro bit there I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create this audio react glitched text effect if you haven't seen recently Apple put out a few home pod commercials and they, all of them kind of deal with some type of audio react effect um, and the one we're specifically going to be focusing on is this one right here Now, as you can see from that, it's not exactly one to one from the one I created to the one they made. Um, if you could see that a lot of it, they have like text being broken out and being scaled up differently. Um, I kind of wanted to just approach it in a more simple way, uh, but I can certainly show you how to approach doing the individual letters and breaking out text to scale them up and move them at, at different rates. Before we jump into today's video, be sure to leave a like, and if you guys aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as that bell icon to be notified of when I upload videos. But enough of me talking, let's jump into the video. Once we're in After Effects, as you can see, I have a quick uh, mock-up of the uh, tutorial. Um, and as you can see, it's actually just made up of a few different layers. We have a glitch overlay and then a few uh, adjustment layers that hold the, some of the glitch controls. We have the music and then we have the text itself. So relatively, it's overall, it's pretty easy. It's made up of only a few components and most of it's handled by some simple expressions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to composition, new composition. And we're just going to make a new comp. We're going to call this our tutorial. And we're going to have a width of 1920 by 1080 and a frame rate of 60 frames a second. And we're going to make it about 15 seconds long. We're going to hit OK. And as you can see, then we have a blank canvas. Now, right now, you can see that we have this tile safe action grid going on. If you want that on or off, you can have it go down here to the left hand side and hit uh, toggle or, uh, or title action safe. And you can turn that on and off. I'm going to have it on for the purposes of this tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to create our text. So we're going to go up here and hit our text tool and we're just going to type out tutorial. Um, and then we're going to center it within our composition. So if we go to a line and then make sure uh, it's centered within the composition, you can just do that. If you don't see that in your window, you can go up here to window align and it should pop up over here or wherever you have it designated beforehand. The one thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the anchor point is in the center of our text. So once we do that, we can zoom back out. And the next thing we're going to do is while we're going to add some of our music. So we already have our music clip lined up here. So we're going to drag that into our timeline. Um, and as you can see, if we go and drop, open up our music layer and hit audio and then waveforms, you can see that we can actually see the actual audio waveforms of our music or whatever audio that we're using. Um, so then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to right click on our music or our audio layer. And we're going to go to keyframe assistant and then convert to audio keyframes. What that's gonna do is that's gonna make a new uh, audio amplitude layer. And if we open that up, and then if we hit uh, effects, you can see that we have our left, right, and both channels. Essentially, that's our stereo channels. You both, uh, Whenever audio is generally played, you're gonna have your left and right side of your or audio tracks. So we actually don't need our left and right channels. We can delete those, and we can just have our both channels selected to make it a little bit easier for us. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to drag our text layer below our music because we want to make sure that our tutorial layer is on the bottom uh, or below all of the effects that we're going to apply. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to, I'm actually just going to color coordinate these. So we're going to make this yellow and then we're also going to make the audio amplitude uh, layer yellow as well just so we can easily keep track of what's tied together and that kind of stuff. So if we go back to our tutorial example, um, you can see that again, I color coordinated it so the other the two music and the audio amplitude layers are close together. Um, but then the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to go add our glitch layer. Um, now you can grab any type of glitch layer. Um, you can either you know grab it off YouTube, um, or you can even make your own with the same audio display or not the audio displacement, but the displacement map effect within After Effects, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to be using one that we've gotten from YouTube. Um, I'm just going to move this along our timeline until I get to the spot that we want to. So I'm just going to keep dragging this over. And as you can see, this is where the glitch starts to begin. And then I can scale it up. 
I make it fit within our audio or our uh, play window. As you can see, that's uh, that's what we got so far. So as you can see, this isn't really going to be doing much for us. We obviously want this to be affected on our text layer and not our whole entire canvas. So the next once one, we drag our adjustment layer below our static layer, what we're going to do is we're going to rename these super clear uh, real quick. So we're going to call this our glitch layer. And then we're going to call our actual glitch layer just glitch layer. Just so we can keep track of things. So once we do that, we're actually just going to change the color of them as well. So they're easier to identify. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to add to our, uh, our essentially our adjustment layers. We want to go to our effects and presets panel and we want to search for displacement map. Once we have that, you can just drag the, uh, drag the displacement map onto our adjustment layer. And once you see that, uh, we get it over here in our effects controls panel. Once you have that, we want to make sure that the displacement map layer is mapped to our actual glitch layer. So once we do that, we can actually turn off the audio and also turn off the glitch layer that we have. And then we can actually see that the um, glitch layer is now affecting our text just the way we want it to. So once we have that, uh, we want to go down here to our audio amplitude layer and we want to start applying an expression to start um, the text reacting to our audio. So what we want to do is open up effects and make sure we go to both channels, open up both channels, and then our slider, um, uh, I guess, ex or for our slider layer for our channels will appear. Um, once we have that, we want to make sure we alt click on the stopwatch to open up our expression panel, and we want to type in the expression ease value or v or sorry, ease parentheses value comma zero comma zero comma zero comma zero and parentheses. So essentially what this expression is, these four numbers represent different things. The first two represent um, the scale in which the audio will react to. So if we go to our slider control, click on it again, and then open up it within our graph editor, you can see that uh, all the keyframes that have been mapped out from before um, all have different valleys and ups and downs, um, just like all audio does. Um, so our, we can see that our peak values are somewhere in like 500, and then our low values can be anywhere from zero to even negative values. Um, so it really just depends on how much you want it to react to. A lot of this is experimenting with what works for you and what works for your specific audio channel that you're using. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna change this to three, and we're gonna change it to 30. Now the last two numbers represent how much we want it to scale uh, in actual size. So zero to say 100 or 150. So when, it, when the audio reacts within that three to 30 range, it's telling it to say, okay, if you're reacting within this range, we want you to scale from zero to 50 um, in size. So once we do that, you can see that, well, actually we can't really see much right now because we do have to apply and another effect. So once we go to our t actual text layer, we want to hit scale on our keyboard or S on our keyboard to access our scale, um, our scale, um, I guess, marker or whatever. And then we want to hit alt again on our stopwatch to open up the expression window. And then we want to go down here to this expression pick whip tool. And we want to drag that to our slider up on our audio amplitude layer. Once we do that, it will add um, some layers and effects to our, or it will add an expression to it. And what we want to do is we want to go down here to where it says temp and temp. And we want to hit plus um, end bracket 100 comma 100 and then end bracket. And now if we start playing it back, you can see that it's starting to bounce with the audio. And that's exactly what we want. Now I'll, I can play it back, but it's not gonna play back that well since I'm recording and all that kind of stuff. But you can clearly see that it's reacting what we want to. So even when the big drop comes in, so you can see in this portion here, it's, you know, that's like the buildup of the song and then the bass drops or whatever. And then you can see it gets a lot bigger. Um, so this is exactly what we want to happen. So then the next thing we want to do is we actually want to start applying more glitches or this, you know, apply a heavier glitch effect to the um, to the text. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to zoom in so we can clearly see where um, the audio cues are at and where the bass is dropping and that kind of stuff. So we can easier uh, like map out what we want to do. So we want to go up here to our glitch layer and we're going to open it up, go to effects and then open up our displacement map. 
And the main things we want to focus on are, is our max horizontal displacement and our max vertical displacement. Now, a few things that we want to uh, keep in check is we actually want to change the, um, like, what it's reacting to to different things. So we're going to change this to luminance and blue. Now, like, it really depends. you got to mess around and see how it works um, with whatever glitch layer you're using. So maybe let's try luminance and lightness or let's try luminance and alpha. And you can see that it's doing a little bit, but not a lot. So what we can do is um, we can start adding some keyframes. So we can see that the audio scales up from here to here really quick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit, uh, do some keyframes. So we're gonna hit zero and zero. And we're gonna keyframe both of those. And then we want to come back down here to our audio. You want to see where it comes up. So where it reaches its max height, so to speak. So it's like right there. And what we want to do is we want to scale this. We kind of just, at this point, it's all about experimentation and seeing what works. Um, and again, we can also play around with some of the edge behavior. So we can hit like tile map. And that's going to essentially stretch the glitch layer if it goes with outside the boundaries and that kind of stuff. Um, and we make sure edge behavior is on and actually well we can actually probably have that off um, and then if we go back down here we can scale it back down to zero and zero but again I don't know if we if that was glitching enough for what we wanted so we, again I'm gonna play around with the glitch layer itself, maybe move this a bit. After about 10 minutes, um, we kind of have the rough outline of how I made the original um, example for this. Um, we have the, you know, the audio reacting the way we want. We have it glitching out the one we want. Um, but there's a few things that are missing that I'm not really going to cover in this, but um, are pretty simple to do. Um, so in the original one that Apple made and the one that I made, there was also some outline text effects, as well as there was some text moving at different points in time, uh, whether it be in scale, position, whatever it might be. Um, so how they did that is they actually went down, uh, you can go down here to your text layer, right click on it and hit um, create shape from text. And so once that's made, you can see that this uh, tutorials outline has appeared and you can open it up, go to content, and you can see that um, we have all of the individual letters in tutorial broken out into individual pieces. And if we open that up, you can see that we also have control over fill, stroke, and even the transform options for both position, scale, skew, rotation, and opacity. Um, so you can easily spend, you know, all day messing around with getting the glitches just right, getting all the individual letters to line up properly and all that. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, um, I mean, I'm not really going to show you how to do that, even though I just did, but I'm not really going to go through the process of individually doing it. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you, do, if you guys do have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below. And if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and also subscribe for more videos just like this. Um, if you guys are not already following me on Twitter or Instagram, you can follow me. All links are down below. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.